Hi treasures, I can't wait till we can meet in person again at church, but until then I made this video for your lesson this week. Um, we're going to do a quick recap on what we learned last week from Miss Ashley. She taught on the uh, ten plagues. So first, Moses came to Pharaoh and he said, let these people go. And God told Moses that Pharaoh's heart would be hardened, and it was. And so when he, when Moses came, Pharaoh was probably like, why would I let your people go? These people are working for me, and I'm, I'm prospering. They're building my kingdom. They're doing things for me. I, why would I let them go? And Moses was like, my God is going to make you let them go. And Pharaoh was like, what God? Your God isn't powerful than my gods because the Egyptians had many gods. And he's like, I have gods too. There's nothing good about your God. But Moses was going to show how God's power through the ten plagues. And the first thing they did was they turned Aaron's staff into a snake. And Pharaoh was still like, I can do that too. My All my magicians will come and they're going to turn their staffs into snakes. And they did. And so he was probably laughing like, really, that's all you got? But, af but after they turned their staffs into snakes, Pharaoh's magicians, Aaron's sta snake, that was a staff, came and swallowed all of the other snakes, showing that God's power was greater than theirs. And Pharaoh still, his heart was hardened, and he didn't really care. So... They came and they were gonna. They were like Pharaoh, we're gonna bring plagues on Egypt if you do not let the, our people go. But still, his heart was hardened, and so the first plague was the whole river and all the water in the land turned to blood, and the fish died because they don't swim in blood, and all the animals in the in the river and in the water died, and the animals couldn't drink, and the people couldn't drink, and so Pharaoh was angry, and he was like, come, take this away, and maybe I'll let your people go. But as soon as the plague was taken away, he was like, nope, I'm not letting them go. Because his heart was still hardened. And so God brought another plague, and the second plague was frogs. And the frogs were everywhere. And they probably smelled bad, like you couldn't take a step without stepping on them and they were in your food and your bed and your clothes jumping on you all the time and when they died they probably smelled really bad right and even if you liked frogs that would be so annoying wouldn't it so then Pharaoh again called Moses and Aaron to come take that plague away and again as soon as it was gone he still wouldn't let them go and so the livestock started to die, which is animals. So like their cows and their horses and donkeys all started to die. So they didn't have meat. They didn't have places they could, they couldn't ride their animals to places. They didn't have milk or cheese or anything. And um, they, they probably used their animals to help plant their um, fields too. So they were annoyed at that. And so... They, Pharaoh had that taken away and Moses and Aaron knew that Pharaoh's heart would be hardened but probably by now they're still getting annoyed that Pharaoh still won't let the people go he just keeps calling them back and back to take away the bad things and then he never lets them go so then boils came and boils are sores that came all over their skin and they were probably pretty big, like maybe this big, and they were probably painful, and they were probably itchy, and very annoying as well. And so Pharaoh had those taken away too. And then hail came, and hail's ice, and it like rains down, just like rain, only ice. And I have ice here. So this is the ice that we get from our freezer to put in our cup, and it was probably like way bigger than that. Like, our hail here is probably, like, as big as the tip of my finger or smaller. But the hail they got was probably, could have been as big as a baseball. And that's pretty big. It can ruin their crops. It could ruin their houses. It could um, hurt them if they were walking on the road, too. Like, come down and hit their head. And that would hurt. 
Then locusts came, and locusts are very bad for crops because they eat everything they see. They eat anything green that they see, so they probably eat all the trees, all the bushes, all the flowers, and all their crops. So the whole land, there was not a green thing in the whole land. And then after that came flies, and f after flies came gnats, and both of those are so annoying. Like when in the summertime here, we have to be as quick as we can opening and closing our door because flies keep coming in and coming in every chance they get and so we end up having to kill a whole bunch of flies in our house and that's not fun and gnats they're small and very annoying they fly up in your ears like Miss Ashley said and they just bother you and they are in huge swarms like through your whole yard and then after the flies and gnats came darkness and some, it's not like darkness when it's about to rain or something, like it clouds over and it's dark. But it's like pitch black darkness that they had, like in the middle of the night. And they probably couldn't go to work or they probably didn't even have the Hebrews come and slave for them because they couldn't see anything. And it says that the Hebrews or the Israelites had light where they were living though, but all the rest of Egypt was covered in complete darkness. And so Pharaoh came and had them take that away too. And Pharaoh, um, Moses knew that this, there, that he was going to do that, but he was going to have another plague. And he knew that this would be the last plague before Moses or before Pharaoh let Moses' people go. And the last plague was very sad. The last plague was God would send one of his angels to come and every firstborn son in Egypt, even the Hebrews, would would die. The firstborn son would die. But Moses told God to tell the Hebrews that if they killed the perfect spotless lamb and wiped the blood of it over their doorposts, that the angel would pass over their house and wouldn't harm their sons. And that is what we call the Passover. And people still celebrate that today. And it signifies the, the angel passing over the Hebrews and sparing them. And that's kind of what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. A spot, he was perfect and spotless and he died so that we, he could restore our relationship with God. Anyway, so that was the last plague. And after that, Pharaoh was angry and he said, get out of here I'm tired of you you keep bringing all these plugs that I don't like and I'm very tired of you so get out of my land and so they left and um, they probably were packed the night before they left and so they were all ready as soon as Pharaoh told them to go and they were out of Egypt so today our Bible lesson will pick up and in Exodus chapter 13 verse 17 and if you don't have your Bibles you can do what Miss Ashley has you do and go grab them really quick and pause this okay so I'm gonna read verse 17 when Pharaoh let the people go God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines although that was near for God said lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt but God led the people around by <clears throat> the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you and shall carry up my bones with you from here. And they moved on from Succoth and encamped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night a pillar of fire to give them light, that they went travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from them. So God was taking care of them even from the minute that they he was always taking care of them, but he was showing them how he was taking care of them by providing a pillar of cloud to lead them. So Moses didn't have any plans or anything out a map of where they were going. He didn't even know where the promised land was. He was trusting God to lead them with to lead them in his wisdom to where the promised land was. And that's what we should do. We should trust God that much that we don't plan. We just let him take it all. So the pillar of cloud is what led them 
by day and that was probably like a normal cloud only a pillar is like pillars were normally used to hold up roofs and so like sometimes they're pretty big like probably this big around and up from the roof to the ground so that's probably what it looked like from the heavens to the earth that's what was leading them and the fire probably looked pretty much like that only it was fire so they could see where they were walking and they didn't step in a hole or so God was looking out for them and it said that it did not depart from them so then picking up in chapter 14 then the Lord said to Moses tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp from Fiharath between Midgol and the sea and in front of Baal Zephon you shall encamp facing it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say to, of the people of Israel, they are wandering in the land. The wilderness has shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, and I will get the glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of the Egyptians was told that the people were had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants were changed toward the people. And they said, What is this that we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So they were, they were mad that they let them go. They were probably like, they, it said in here, they were like, Why did we let them go? Now we don't have anyone to work for us. We don't have anyone to build our kingdom. We don't have anyone to do whatever we tell them to do without being paid. So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him and took 600 chosen chariots and all other chariots of Egypt with officers over them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going on defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them, encamped by the sea, by pi Herath, in front of baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, it is, because, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the land of the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is that, is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. So even after all God did for them, they still aren't trusting him, are they? And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. So he's saying there, the Lord will fight for you, and you don't have to do anything. You can sit back and watch how he will take care of you. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward, lift up your staff, and stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them. And I will get the glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. And then the angel of God, who was going before them, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. So first he, the pillar of cloud was in front of them leading the way. But then when they encamped, he came and be, came behind them, separating them from the Egyptians, like a wall around them to protect them from the Egyptians. And it says, coming between the hosts of Egypt and the hosts of Israel, and there was a cloud in the darkness, and it lit up the night, without one coming near the other all night. So that means that the Egyptians did not come near the Israelites all night long, so they were safe. God was protecting them. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them in their right hand and on their left. So you guys have been to a lake, right? So the lake is 
all the way like flat and then so God t said lift up your staff over it and he parted the water right down the middle and he not only parted it for them to walk through but he drew up he made the ground for them to walk on dry so they wouldn't sink in and so their so their feet wouldn't even get muddy that's how he was taking care of them okay so let me find my set And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall on them on the right hand and left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, all his chariots, and all his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into panic clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them. Excuse me. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, and the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course. And when the morning appeared, and as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. So it parted for the Israelites, and as soon as the Israelites were all through and the Egyptians followed them, he caused the, the waters to come crashing back down on them, and so all of them drowned. And all the hosts of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the land of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore, and Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. So this is a good reminder for us today that we don't have to be afraid. We can trust God. He's going to fight all our battles. All we need to do is tell him, we need you to take over because we can't do this on our own. So if you're scared, you can pray to him and he will take care of you. Even in this time of coronavirus, we don't have to be scared of the coronavirus, do we? Because we know that God is protecting us and he's looking out for us. And he's our perfect Heavenly Father and he won't let anything happen to us that he won't protect us from. And that doesn't mean you just go licking everything though. Like you should probably not do that because that would be bad. Because he still wants us to take care of ourselves. He's just promising us that he will always be there for us. And he will always look over us and we never have to be afraid. In that verse, verse 14 of chapter 14, it says, The Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. I really like that verse because it's telling us that we don't have to worry about it we can watch God take care of us and we don't have to be afraid and in Matthew chapter 6 verse 26 you can turn there if you want it says look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor weep nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not of more value than they and which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? So the first part is saying, look at the birds. They are taking care of. God takes care of them. And he gives them food and a place to sleep. And we are so much more important to him than the birds. And he's saying, you don't have to be afraid because I take care of the birds, so I'm going to take care of you too. And in the second verse, he's saying, and which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of life? So when we're worried, that's not going to help us at all, right? There's no point in worrying because we can trust Him. And even, I've been learning that if you worry, it's a sin to worry because you're not trusting God, that He can take care of you. So that's our lesson today, that we don't ever have to be afraid because God will protect us, even in the scary times, like, this can be scary for us right now, right? But we don't have to be afraid. So I'm going to pray real quick, and um, thank you for listening. So let's pray.
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful day that you gave us today, and I thank you for this lesson that you gave us, that you will take care of us and always provide for us. I pray that you will be with everyone listening, that you will help them not to be afraid and feel your peace come over them, that um, they know you are in charge of everything. And in your heavenly name we pray, amen. Thank you for listening, guys. Bye.